is a special presentation of Riverfront Broadcasting Sports. It's time for Pear Governor Basketball on KCCR and on YouTube at KCCR Sports. Pear Governor Basketball is brought to you in part by Rising Hope Counseling, Bank West, Fisher Rounds, Billion Auto, AGE, Capital City, Ford, Lincoln, and Toyota, and Envirotech. Back out for Barry. How about another one for Barry? You betcha! You betcha! Three threes in the corner for Ryan Barry. She's got 23 tonight. And by American Family Insurance, Brittany Shufflebine Agency, River Bottom Sanitation, CHS River Plains, Wheelhouse Auto Body, Edward Jones Financial, and Allied Plumbing and Heating. And that badge is stolen away. Here is Keatles wide open. Windmill slam for Lincoln Keatles. And a timeout taken by Coach Wilhelm. Here, Governor Basketball is also brought to you by Ferding Electric, Gales Gas, First Dakota National Bank, Faith Lutheran, Land Motors, James Pharmacy, and B&B Equipment. Tipped out to Williger gets the rebound. They will foul her one more time with 9.2 to go. And just listen to them. And what an atmosphere it was tonight here at Rick Sites. And by Hawaii Federal Credit Union. Anderson Rumsa Dental, Todd's Electric, Graham Tire, Avera, and the South Dakota Office of the Attorney General Division of Consumer Protection. And now with the call, KCCR award-winning sports director, John Winkler. And a good afternoon as we welcome you here from Rex High School. Again, good afternoon to you. A matinee, Friday matinee, as the Pier Governors take on the Mitchell Colonels. Big boys contest. The Mitchell Colonels coming in, sitting, sitting still atop the AA standings at 15-1. and one. Well, The Pier Governors come in at 10-7. and seven. John Winkler here alongside with you. Welcome those in listening on, uh, on KORN here this afternoon as well. The Governors and Colonels playing a, a two games today here at 3 o'clock here in Pier, and then they'll be the girls will be playing at 7 o'clock tonight at the Corn Palace. And not so much for Pier in the same situation, but for the Colonels, they're near the same situation. Both teams at 15 and 1. Uh, the Colonel boys are at number 1 in the standings, and the Colonel girls at number 2 in the standings after their loss uh, on Tuesday. But overall, let's talk about the boys' contest. And for the Pier governors, when they take on this Mitchell Colonel team, we've gotten accustomed to the Governor Girls being a team that uh, doesn't go very deep. Well, the Mitchell Colonels don't go very deep into their into their bench. Their five starters play the majority of the game, and then uh, you also have as well uh, just a, just a couple of guys that sprinkle in as well. Uh, Parker Mandel and uh, Sutton uh, Thompson, I believe, are the two that will be coming in off the bench if they do come off the bench. The starters of Landon Solik, Marcus Talley, Colton Smith, uh, Gavin uh, Sokup, and uh, Tyler Christensen. Those three starters or those five starters pretty much do, and three of those five starters pretty much get all the points. They, they control most of this game, and they play throughout the entire the entirety of the, the contest. And Mitchell has not lost since early on in 2024. Their only loss is the Harrisburg Tigers, who sit at number two. But since that loss to Harrisburg on January 2nd, they've rattled off nine wins in a row and looking for their 10th win in a row, while the Governors are just looking for win number 11 in total as they come in at 10-7. and seven. And the Governors survive a game on Tuesday against the Brookings Bobcats. The team that's number 19 in the AA standings, um, they were able to hang with the Governors, and it came down to overtime. It came down to free throws being made, and the Governors picked up a 54-50 overtime win. And the huge thing about that is you got the win. It doesn't hurt you in the standings. It was going to be a 41-point win regardless, but overall, this Governor team survived that uh, that near disaster against Brookings and they didn't shoot the ball all that well. You give give credit to the Brookings Bobcats for playing well in that game and forcing overtime and nearly getting a win over the Pier Governors. But overall, it was uh, for for Brookings and for Pier that a very close game. But for the Governors, came out on top and now they have to be much better than they were on uh, Tuesday. But also just have to know that uh, 
you got the win on Tuesday. You got to move through and play here this afternoon against the, the Colonels because you, you'll go from the final team in the standings at number 19 in double A to now the number one team in double A in the Mitchell Colonels who are looking to get back to the state championship. They lost in the state championship last year to the Yankton Bucks. And now here this year, their their goals have not changed. Their, their sights have not uh, have not set on anything else. Obviously, they got to win two games to get to that state championship. Once they get to the state tournament, um, it's not a freebie, but it's, you know, being number one and taking on the number 16 seed. Yeah, it's not a freebie, but they're, it is one of the easier games to be playing in when it comes to the Sodak 16. And Mitchell has that goal to get to that state championship, and they've, they've done their part through the first 16 games of the season. It is an odd Friday afternoon basketball game, but we're glad you're with us here on KCCR on KRN and also watching on YouTube at KCCR Sports as the Governors and Mitchell Colonels coming up here from Rakes High School on a uh, cold and chilly Friday afternoon here in the capital city. We will return in three minutes. We'll talk more about this matchup, look at the standings, and look at what the rest of the season has in store because this next week will be the final week of the season. Mitchell's not done after tonight, after this uh, game, or after tonight. They're not done with this week uh, after we get done with this game. So we'll talk more about that coming up here in just a little bit. We'll be back in three minutes. You're listening to Pierre Governor Basketball on KCCR, on KRN, as well as also watching it on YouTube at KCCR Sports. We all want to be happy, but sometimes that doesn't feel possible. But if you have hope, you have everything. Rising Hope Counseling provides high quality mental health services with locations across South Dakota. Additionally, by providing telehealth, we ensure South Dakota's rural residents have access to high quality mental health services. Our team lives and works in your communities, and we understand the unique challenges we face. Schedule appointment by phone or online today. Rising Hope Counseling, offering hope, healing, and change. We might not be the largest repair shop in town, but we take pride in what we do. We want to make the experience as painless as possible for you. So we will work with your insurance company on your claim from beginning to the end. Locally owned with 50 years combined in the shop, Wheelhouse Auto Body will take the stress off of you. Wheelhouse Auto Body at 720 North Garfield or contact them at 605-494-0436. 605-494-0436 or wheelhouseautobody at gmail.com. This winter, sip on a delicious hot cocoa and lose yourself in the grace of a fresh falling snow before you smash that hot mug on the driveway and join First Dakota to bank some noise for winter sports. Stomp for block shots, holler for match ceiling takedowns, and go berserk for a perfect dismount. Let's give the home team all we've got. Bank some noise with us at First Dakota National Bank. Open a new account online today at firstdakota.com, member FDIC. River Bottom Sanitation, your locally owned waste management company serving the Pier and Fort Pier communities. Contact River Bottom Sanitation for your residential and commercial pickups. Now River Bottom Sanitation is your source for all your roll-off needs. River Bottom Sanitation and Pier and Fort Pier. Give them a call for pricing at 605-222-1120. River Bottom Sanitation, that's 605-222-1120. With any dream, the wind won't always be at your back, the sun won't always be shining, and some rain is going to fall. American Family Insurance is like a good solid roof that you can trust to protect your biggest dreams. With plans that could save you up to 23% when you bundle your home and auto. Also, you can continue to dream fearlessly, no matter what comes your way. American Family Insurance. Visit mfam.com to learn how discounts may apply to you. American Family Mutual Insurance Company assigned its operating company, 6000 American Parkway, Madison, Wisconsin. Contact the Brittany Shufflebine Agency, LLC. 224-6627. Looking for your next new or used car, truck, or SUV? Then go no further than the comfort of your own home. Shop online at lammotor.com. On lammotor.com, you'll find the vehicles Lambs has in stock. You can schedule a test drive or your vehicle's next tune-up all online. New or used, shop for it all online anywhere you are. Lamb Motor has the right vehicle for you. Land Motor in Oneida and online, landmotor.com. Back here at Rick's High School as we continue the pregame show, getting sent for a tip-off between the Governors and the Mitchell Colonels for, from Rick's High School. The Mitchell Colonels coming in at 15-1. and one. They are number one in the standings. They would be taking on Yankton if the season had ended today in the 116 matchup in the Sodak 16. Governors are sitting at number 10, and they've got a couple of games in front of them still if they can pick up wins, specifically here this afternoon, and then also the last game of the season on the road against Roosevelt. Those two wins 
really, and then along with beating Jefferson on Tuesday, can help the Governors trying to get back into that eight spot because uh, they're only point two points away from uh, passing Watertown for that number eight spot. Uh, but they've got to get wins over the last three games to make that happen. Otherwise, they'd be two Sioux Falls taking on Washington if the season had ended today in the 7-10 matchup. Mitchell will play again tomorrow. They they beat uh, Washington earlier this week on Tuesday uh, in Sioux Falls. Now they're taking on the Governors here today in Pierre, and they will travel to Roosevelt to take on the Rough Riders tomorrow, who are 12-4. and four. The Governors still have the Ro Rough Riders still on their schedule as well to close out the season next week, Friday. But that's a matchup of the top four teams. Roosevelt at number four in the standings at 12-4. and four. They will be hosting the Mitchell Colonels tomorrow. Mitchell then will, will be back in the Corn Palace for its final game of the regular season, uh, home game of the regular season on Tuesday against Brandon Valley, and then on Friday to O'Gorman to wrap up the season. So uh, they do not have any teams under 500, and of the final six of the last seven games are against teams right now that are at 500 or above. Uh, it was Aberdeen Central that they beat uh, last uh, Tuesday, a couple Tuesdays ago when they won on uh, February 6th. They, that, they're 7-10. and 10. Everybody else has been over 500, and this is a team that's played a lot of really good opponents and beaten a lot of really good teams throughout this season and especially in a spot where the governors are uh, or the Mitchell Colonels who are 15 and 1 and their record against teams above 500 or at 9 and 1 on the year so they've played 10 teams with records at 500 or above and uh, they have uh, been able to to really control uh, and and have their way with a lot of teams that are above 500 so far this season. The Governors on the other side, uh, they have played really well at home. Uh, when it comes down to, the, to home, they're at 7-1 and one on the season at home uh, and 3-6 and six on the road again uh, for the Pier Governors. So this is a, a good spot to be at for the Governors. They love playing here at Riggs High School. We're getting the crowd still following in. It is Little Gov's Day afternoon, not Little Gov's Night, but Little Gov's Day where uh, the kids can get in for free if they're wearing their T-shirt from the camp this summer. Uh, and for this uh, Governor team, they, they love playing in front of the, the Pier Faithful, and they've done well every time they've done. They've played in front of this uh, the Pier Faithful so far this year. Governors and the Mitchell Colonels coming up here from uh, the Riggs High School. Again, Governor girls are playing in Mitchell tonight. That's a 7 o'clock tip-off uh, at the Corn Palace. Usually we're playing, starting at the exact same time outside of your know, mountain time where you get an 8 o'clock uh, central time start when you're playing out in Rapid City. The other game starting at 7 o'clock. Usually at the same time, well, this is a 3 o'clock afternoon start, a 7 o'clock start tonight for the Governor Girls taking on the Mitchell Colonels uh, from the Corn Palace. That'll be coming up as the Governor Girls then will be back at home uh, next week at Friday to finish out the season. Governors are going to finish out the year next week at home against Jefferson, uh, taking on the 9-9 nine nine Cavaliers, and then they're also taking on Roosevelt in the final game of the season over in Sioux Falls next week Friday. So... The final week of the year is going to be a lot of fun to see how much change happens in the standings. And where the Governors right now are sitting in 10th, couple, three wins in a row here. If, if you get those three wins, all of a sudden this Governor team is inside the top eight and finding themselves in a home game of the Sodak 16. And again, we just mentioned the record that the Governors have here at home. They play very well here at home, and that uh, gives that home court advantage uh, even more of a meaning if you can get that home game uh, here at the beginning of March on that Saturday, that first Saturday of March coming up to finish out the regular season and get into postseason play. We will talk with Coach Brandon Kusler of the Pier Boys basketball team coming up here in just a little bit as the Pier Governors and the Mitchell Colonels from Rick High School back in three minutes. You're listening to Pier Governor Basketball on KCCR. Watching it on YouTube at KCCR Sports. No one likes to have electrical problems, but when they happen, call Tons Electric at 223-2518. With over 28 years of experience, Tons Electric can handle any type of electrical problem, whether it's residential, commercial, or agricultural. Their knowledgeable staff knows and understands the importance of your home, business, or ag facility and are prepared to help. Call Tons Electric at 223-2518. That's 223-2518. Tons Electric, serving the Pier and Fort Pier areas. The to power. Financial investments are very important, but so are the investments of time, patience, and encouragement our young athletes receive from their coaches, teachers, and mentors. Your Pier Area Edward Jones Financial Advisors understand this. That's why Edward Jones is a proud sponsor of Governor Athletics on KCCR. Go Govs! For all your investment needs, call or stop by one of our offices to visit with your Pier Area Edward Jones Financial Advisor. Edward Jones. 
Member SIPC. Hey, hey you. Are you at a job that is fulfilling, has good benefits to support you or a family today, and retirement goes down the road? If you just said no, listen up. CHS River Plains is hiring operations personnel, drivers, and custom applicators at several locations. These come with a knockout affordable benefit package for you and the whole family. Apply to a job with CHS River Plains and up your benefits straight up. To apply, visit us online at chsriverplains.com or stop in at one of our locations. CHS is an equal opportunity employer. As community bankers, BankWest employees are deeply committed to supporting local causes, growing the local economy, and creating local opportunities. At a time when you can bank anywhere, we hope you choose BankWest. We'll be your financial partner for the long haul, helping you and your community achieve financial success. BankWest. Convenient. Connected. Committed. Member FDIC. Look, it's no secret that owning a vehicle can cause a lot of stress, and they get a lot of wear and tear on them through the extreme seasons we've grown to love. Graham Tire wants you to know that you can trust them with any problem that you have with your vehicle. Their ASC certified mechanics can make your AC cool again, or even just change your oil. They can look into and fix those noises that seem to come from nowhere and have you stressed out. Bring your car to Graham Tire so they can put your mind at ease. Graham Tire your tire store next door. We can look back at the game and see how we came to our position. This is Pastor Sam from Faith Lutheran Church. We can also look back at our lives and see how we got to where we are today. If you're in a tough spot or if things are going great, I encourage you to try this approach. Call a timeout. Get some advice from the best possible coach from your loving God. Join us at Faith Lutheran Church for worship where you'll hear God's plan for the game. We're Faith Lutheran and we are glad you're here. As we welcome back to the pregame show here on KCCR and on YouTube at KCCR Sports, joining me is Coach Brandon Kusler and Coach, you come in uh, big game today. Uh, Mitchell coming in at fifteen and one. Uh, it, it's there, there's a lot at stake. Uh, it's it's a big game Friday afternoon basketball. There's a lot of mixed emotions and, and a lot of emotion going into this game. There is, you know, you're, you're off on a um, on a Friday from school and um, we get an afternoon game here. To to uh, it feels a little out of the ordinary, but you know, the it's kind of like a Saturday afternoon. That's how we're treating it a little bit. Um, even though it's a Friday right now, it's it's a great time to be able to be in the gym. We've got little govs night, um, so there's going to be a lot of little rugrats running around um, and should have a great energy to our gym right now. Um, there's a lot to be excited about coming off of a, a big overtime win against Brookings. It, we, we had a claw for every possession there. Um, you know, we, we've got Jet Zabel back now. Um, he was out that game from Ole Miss, so That'll be nice to kind of get back to some familiar ground. Um, the, the boys battled hard without him, um, but it'll certainly be nice to, to have that comfort again. I was going to ask about Mitchell, but or about Brookings, and, and uh, let's go into Mitchell now. What, what have you seen from them on film? Obviously, a lot of good things, but what have you seen from them overall? You know, they're, they're really a three-headed monster, um, and with the tally kid, um, Smith, and Soak Up, so 4, 5, and 12 there, um, those are their primary scorers. In fact, They've had some some games where those are the only three that that score. Um, other guys, they're they're they play their role well. Um, they play about seven guys deep, so they're not. We, we've got a little bit more depth than them uh, from a bench standpoint. But you know, those three, they really don't come out. Um, they're they're pretty versatile players. Marcus Talley is one of the best players in the state. Um, he he resembles a kid like Jacoby Merriman um, in in a set. He just has good composure, uh, able to to command the floor forces a lot of uh, lot of coverage and, and a lot of times over rotating to where he he has great vision on the on the court as well so we're gonna have to make sure that we're controlling him um, not allowing them to to get it downhill attacking well because um, they do find other scorers too um, and, and then just being playing our physical game that we we want to and pushing the tempo as much as possible I think we're gonna have opportunities to push in in transition um, they don't have as much of an inside pressure presence is what they have. I think we would match up pretty well um, against them inside. So we're going to need to make sure that we're, uh, we're doing our job getting 
everything um, work and firing from all cylinders, not just uh, from the perimeter or just inside. We need to be all over the place. And, and obviously now going the last three games of the season, uh, two games next week, uh, being one at home, one on the road, uh, you know, obviously it's just as important as it is beginning of the season as it is now at, towards the end of the season. But, but a win today in, in a game like this to play well against Mitchell, what does that? What will that do confidence-wise? What can that do for the peer governors? Yeah, like you said, every game is important, but it starts to be magnified just a little bit more once you get down the stretch here. So um, this would be huge um, for PowerPoints, for just the confidence going forward. Um, uh, our guys should go out there with, with nothing but confidence, um, playing hard. They're playing well right now together. Um, they're, they're having a lot of fun. Our practices this week have been great. Um, we're getting kids healthy again, um, which has we this is we've gone this is now about three weeks that we've gone with none of our or at least one of our varsity boys gone so we have not had a full practice um, in a couple of weeks and it's just kind of been a, a chain reaction I think we're finally on the men knock on wood but uh, you know even when they haven't felt a hundred percent their effort is still there um, and, and that just tells you all you need to know about those kids they fight um, they find ways tonight we're gonna have to really make sure that we're um, making adjustments as we need to uh, and and just play the game that we're capable of. And overall, what's going to be the biggest key here for the Guffs to get a win against Mitchell? You know, we're going to have to slow down those those three that I talked about earlier, um, being able to to mix things up defensively, limit their uh, second chance opportunities, clear the glass because they, they crash the offensive glass really hard, uh, making sure that, that we're doing our job. We've got to have all five of our guys connected, playing as one defensively, and then um, continue to share the basketball in, in transition and in the half court offense offensively uh, and, and that should give us an opportunity to be uh, victorious at the end well coach i appreciate time as always good luck this afternoon thank you All right, more of the pregame show next here in three minutes on kccr and on youtube at kccr sports wondering what to do with the pitted and rutted drive bnb equipment will get you covered wanting to put something down the ground bnb equipment will put a hole in your project Need to even up that property? B&B Equipment can fill that need. B&B Equipment can deliver all your gravel and material needs. B&B Equipment is here for all your excavation needs. Contact B&B Equipment, 224-6727. A contractor here for you. That's B&B Equipment, 224-6727. Ah, uh, why am I so sore? There are everyday moments. Oh, hey, hold the ladder! Hold the ladder! Oh, oh. Yeah? That hurt. And there are epic moments. When a moment creates a health need, visit the experts at Avera Orthopedics. We're moving health forward so you can tell the story. Learn more at avera.org slash orthopedics. Refined design, remarkable capabilities. The Ford Edge at Capital City Ford delivers everyone and everything in style and comfort. Bold and aggressive on the outside, lavish with lots of tech on the inside. This SUV does a whole lot more than haul groceries. Travel with confidence when purchasing your all-new Ford Edge from Capital City Ford. And for a limited time, qualified buyers can purchase at 0.9% APR for 60 months. Check out their full vehicle lineup at CapitalCityFord.com. Capital City Ford in Pier. At Shane's Pharmacy, your health care is important, and Shane wants to be the pharmacist to take care of you. Shane's Pharmacy will make sure your prescriptions are filled in a timely manner. They will answer your questions, and they will even deliver to your home or office. Call 223-9200. Shane's Pharmacy, the pharmacy you know and trust. The number again is 223-9200. Shane's Pharmacy in Fort Pier, proud to support high school athletics. Most of us already know that Gale's Gas of Pier is the place to call for propane. They offer an automatic fill plan so you never have to worry about running out of propane. They accept debit and credit payments or a budget payment plan to spread out the cost throughout the year so you never have surprises when you get your bill. For delivery, convenience, and great customer service, call Gale's Gas at 224-5518. That's Gale's Gas at 224-5518. Have you ever wondered what the benefits are of becoming a Wahi Federal Credit Union member? 
At Oahe Federal Credit Union, we reinvest profits in you. We do this in the form of lower interest rates, higher dividends, and low to no fees. So come check us out or come in at 221 East Pleasant Drive in Pier. Because at Oahe Federal Credit Union, we treat our members like they own the place because, well, they do. Oahe Federal Credit Union. And as we welcome you back here, the Pier Governor's Mitchell Colonel's coming up from Rick High School here in just about uh, three minutes. Uh, well, a little bit more than three minutes, but uh, we'll have that to start just a little bit after three o'clock as the Govs and Colonels uh, play here this afternoon. And again, the Colonels coming in at 15 and one of the season, the uh, top team in double A, while the Pier Governor's coming in at 10 and seven, sit at uh, number 10 in these standings right now and would be on the road if the season had ended today. Governors uh, are looking to shoot the ball well. They're, overall, the last couple games, they're lost to Huron, but they're winning against Brookings, shooting around 35% from the field. Now, uh, they've at different times have shot under 30%, uh, had a 27% shooting performance against Harrisburg and a 24% shooting percentage against Washington. And both those games, uh, and, and against Stevens, also shot uh, 29% from the floor. And in those games, of course, the Govs, didn't get the win that they were hoping to have. Uh, kind of, uh, you know, both teams or all three teams were able to have their way against the Governors. But if, but if Pierre can shoot and they can shoot the ball well, they've had several different times. They shot over 50% against Spearfish, uh, shot near 50%. A couple times against uh, Douglas, against Bismarck, uh, as well as also shooting close to 50% against Yankton. They shot 45% from the field. And this governor team can shoot the ball uh, with the best of them, but they will have to handle the, uh, the as Coach Cooster said, the three-headed three -headed mo monster of Smith, uh, as well as also Tally and Suckup, because those are three big guys to, to target and uh, for this Mitchell Curl team. They don't go much deeper than what they have on the floor to begin the game, but it is a team that uh, nobody has been able to really figure out. It's mostly been, other than Harrisburg, there's been nobody that's been able to figure out the Mitchell Colonels as uh, they come in at 15 and one the season and have won nine straight coming in here this afternoon. Want to remind you too that uh, coming up uh, tonight, well, scheduled to have Hawaii Capitals Hockey on Capital City Rock. Not going to make the trip out to Rapid City, but we're going to still try and get you that broadcast uh, and still have it on YouTube at Capital City Rock Sports. Hope we can make that happen, uh, but, but make sure you check the Facebook page if something would happen where we can't do it. Uh, make sure you catch the Facebook page. Otherwise, we still plan to, to remotely try and make that happen for you so we can get you some hockey here tonight, but also have it for you tomorrow uh, and Sunday afternoon on Capital City Rock and on YouTube at Capital City Rock Sports. So the Pier Governors and the Mitchell Colonels from Rex High School, both teams heading to their, their respective benches. They've got the National Anthem starting lineup, opening tip. That's on the way. We've got the starting lineups and opening tip coming up for you next. Back in three minutes, you're listening to Pier Governor Basketball on KCCR, uh, also on KORN, and you're watching it on YouTube at KCCR Sports. When you're looking for quality trash pickup services, look no further than Envirotech. Six days a week, their trucks are on the road picking up trash, even holidays. They're also the place to contact for recycling services. Their friendly, professional staff is ready to assist with weekly pickups or even special pickups. Check out the website at envirotechwaste.com. Envirotech is locally operated. Call 224-4804. Envirotech Waste Services in Pier. Proud to support ACCR Pier. AM 12. 40 and 98.9 FM, a riverfront broadcasting station. Insurance. We all need it to protect our homes, health, businesses, and belongings. But having adequate coverage is just the beginning. You also need the support of professionals who stand by your side to protect what's important to you. Fisher Rounds and Associates combines the coverage you want with the commitment you need. Fisher Rounds and Associates. At your service, at your side with offices in Pier, Mitchell, Watertown, Sioux Falls, and Rapid City. Ferdinand Electric has a long history of doing electrical work the right way. Economical service, professional work, and customer satisfaction is why they can say that. Ferdinand Electric can do residential, farm, and commercial projects. Doesn't matter if they are charged with new construction or a remodel project, they get it conducted. Contact the staff at Ferdinand Electric at 224-8684. They can light a spark into your next project. Ferning Electric, 224-8684.
At Anderson Rumsa Dental, we want to change the way your family views the dentist. Let us replace your dread of the chair with personal service in a friendly and inviting atmosphere. Using state-of-the-art technology, we offer porcelain crowns completed in one day, saving you time and money. Anderson Rumsa Dental, located at 1521 North Harrison Avenue in Pierre. Experience dental procedures performed while you're in a deeply relaxed state, often with no recollection of the time past. Anderson Rumsa Dental. Call us today at 605-224-6111. That's 605-224-6111. We all have had to fix little things. Loose screw? Get a screwdriver. Nail coming up? Find a hammer. Bolt coming loose? Get some wrenches. Sometimes these little things tend to make us think we can fix big things. Plug drain? Call Allied Plumbing. Water heater leaking? Call Allied Plumbing. Sewer backed up? (laughs) Trust me. Leave it to the professionals and rely on your ally. Call Allied Plumbing. With 75 years of combined experience, it speaks for itself. Allied Plumbing, 494-2001. South Dakotans, due to the recent flood, hail, and windstorms, many of you have damage and are in need of making repairs. When it comes to making the decision of who to hire to complete the repairs, you should always check with the Department of Revenue to ensure they're licensed to do business in South Dakota. And you should check with Consumer Protection to see if any complaints have been filed against the company. And finally, never sign anything until you read all the details. Rule of thumb, when someone knocks on your door to sell you a product or service, they need to provide you with a three-day right to cancel. Go to ConsumerSD.gov and look under Transient Vendors or call 800 300 one nine eight six, and we welcome you back here. We are getting set uh, for tip off between the Pier Governors and the Metro Colonels. As we welcome you back here at Rick Science School, and welcome those listening on uh, KORN here this afternoon. Joe Eckler here with you as the Govs and the Colonels are set for battle. As we go through the starting lineups, first it'll be for the, the Metro Colonels. It is going to be number three, Landon Solik, the five eleven junior guard. Mark, uh, number four, Marcus Talley, the f- 6'1 junior guard. Colton Smith, the 6'5 sophomore guard. Also, Gavin Sokup, the 6'3 senior guard. And number 20, Tyler Christensen, the 6'0 sophomore guard. For the Peer Governors, it is the usual suspects that will be uh, the starters. It will be Luke Olson, wearing number one, the 5'11 junior guard. Number three, Jed Zabel, the 6'5 senior forward. Number five, Kate Kaiser, the 6'2 senior guard. Number 10, Dawson gets the 6'3 junior guard. And number 11, Miles Doyle, the 6'1 senior guard. As the Govs be wearing their white home jerseys, the Mitchell Colonels wearing their black road jerseys with their yellow letters and numbers. Governors with the green numbers and letters across their jerseys as well. Pier will go from right to left. The Mitchell Colonels from left to right as eight minutes are on the clock. We are set and ready to roll here this afternoon as the opening tip is away and it's won back by the Governors. And glad you're with us here on a Friday afternoon to get things started. Luke Olson, he'll work to the right side for the Governors. Olson will start to drive baseline. He steps out of bounds and will turn it over. He tried to keep it in play and actually threw it off of Marcus Satali and went off of his head and it ends up being a turnover. Maybe thought there could have been a foul Olsen thinking there could have been a foul. Governors thinking there could have been a foul, but good defense by Marcus Talley. And Mitchell will force a early turnover. This will be on the left side. Talley will give back top of the key for Gavin Sokup. Now back for Talley again. He'll be driving to Sulik, and he'll give away for Talley. Talley back top of the key. Colton Smith starts to drive, kicks it back for Talley, who will drive inside underneath. The ball was lost, and a turnover as it was a... a Number 40, Gavin Hinker, excuse me, he's in the starting lineup. Hinker gets the, the start for the Mitchell Colonels, and he will turn the ball over. As Jet Zabel, that will drive. That one will be missed. The shot missed, and the rebound is grabbed by the Mitchell Colonels. On the left side, Soak up. Underneath for Hinker. Off the glass, missed the shot, and the rebound is going to be grabbed, and then we get a foul committed on the rebound attempt that's going to go against Mitchell, and that's going to be on Landon Solik, his first. So not Christensen, but Gavin Hinker in the starting lineup for the Mitchell Colonels. As we're underway, 6.44 to go in the first quarter. Still looking for our first bucket of the afternoon. Luke Olsen got to the rim, laid it up, but he laid it just a bit too strong. And he'll go back the other way. So it's wide open for three. That one's missed. And Dawson Getz will grab the rebound for the Governors. We go back the other way. Lob pass from Olsen to Kaiser. Underneath the basket, high off the glass. And it's good for Kate Kaiser. 
And the Governors lead at 2 0. First bucket of the ball game with 6.15 to go here in a quarter number one. Driving all the way to the basket, and the shot is up and good. An easy layup for Colton Smith. And it's a 2 2 tie here with 6.05 to go in the first quarter. Dawson Getz will step back. Long shot that's missed. Too strong with it. Tally with the rebound. And away we go back the other way. Tally will split, sprint his way to the basket and will lay it in. And Marcus Tally makes it a 4-2 lead for the Mitchell Colonels. So Tally is on the score sheet. It is Kaiser that will give away for Luke Olson. Now top of the key for... Dawson get for Miles Doyle. Kaiser now Dawson Guess will catch for three. And that one barely hit the net at all. Right through for Dawson Getz. Then the Govs take a 5-4 lead. Landon Solik up in the front court. Luke Olson lost his footing. He gets back up. As it's Gavin Sokup that will pass for Tally. Tally on the left wing, top of the key. We're gonna right side now for Solik again. Man to man defense by the governors. Solik bumps into Olsen, gives back for Tally, who will drive to the basket, miss the shot, didn't get it high enough off the glass, and the rebound's grabbed by the Governors. Olsen, he hesitated, then he drove in. Spin move inside the paint, will kick it back out for Miles Doyle. Skip pass for Kate Kaiser, now it's Zabel underneath. He got forearm shoved by Hanker, then his shot was blocked by Hanker. Now Zabel has it again, with 15 to go on the shot clock. Luke Olsen. He'll start to drive out top for Doyle with eight seconds to go on the shot clock. Now it's Olsen again. Olsen the pump fake, starts to drive, lost the handle of it, turnover by the Colonels, and then Olsen nearly got it right back. He does, and it will be for Jed Zabel. Zabel, then he throws it for Kaiser, goes off of the Colonels, and another turnover by both those teams. And all the way back down the other end of the floor, Marcus Talley will get the long pass, and his shot with the left hand is good to make it 6-5. to five. And the Governors got him a little bit too quick moving. They forced a turnover back after Olsen had lost the ball, but they couldn't come away with points. As Dodson gets, now we'll have it on the right side. Ball poked away from him, and it's gonna go off of Getz and out of bounds, and it'll be a turnover again by the Governors. Already their fourth turnover. over were four minutes to go in the first quarter. 6-5 lead for the Colonels and the American Family Insurance. Brittany Schoffel by scoreboard. Marcus Talley, suck up, oh, Solik, now for suck up, now back over. Suck up will be underneath for Hinker, who pump fakes on the smaller Luke Olson. An easy bucket for Gavin Hinker. 8 5 lead. Hinker stands at 6 4 as Kate Kaiser will catch at the free throw line. His jumper is missed, but the rebound is grabbed by Zabel, who will give back for Kaiser again. And uh, offensive board there for the Governors. As it is Olsen on the right side, who backpedals. Now drives in with the right hand, float off the back iron, and then a foul committed on the rebound by Kate Kaiser. That's going to be his first and the team's first of the quarter with 3.18 to go here in quarter number one. Parker Mandel will check in. One of the few guys that they will go to on the bench as Ty and Buss will check in for Miles Doyle. An inbound pass here, Marcus Talley across court. Suckup got across, Parker Mandel, his pass, that ball knocked away, loose ball, it's gonna be off of the Colonels last, and another turnover by Mitchell. And Ty and Buss forced the turnover. The pass went for Colton Smith, and he just couldn't quite have the handle of it, thanks to the help of a Ty and Buss, and a turnover by the Colonels. Buss. Now to a cutting gets, lost the handle of the ball, is able to get it back, had an open look at it for just a moment, but never got the shot away. Kaiser, his pull-up jumper is missed. A little bit off balance for Kaiser, a little bit of a double clutch, and then a pass all the way up ahead for Parker Mandel, who will be fouled by Ty and Buss, and to the free throw line will be Mandel for the first time here this afternoon. Ty and Buss will pick up the foul, his first and the team's second, 8-5 lead for Mitchell with 2.46 to go here in quarter number one. First free throw is good for Mandel. Sutton Thompson will check in, so they do go too deep already from their bench as the second free throw for Mandel is good to make it a 10-5 lead for the Mitchell Colonels. 
An 8-0 run here for Mitchell. As Ty and Bustle will catch on the left side here for the Governors. Looks underneath for Zabel, off of his body, diving for the loose ball, but it will come away to the Mitchell Colonels, and the Governors have turned the ball over five times here in this first quarter with 2.25 to go here in the first. Driving all the way to the basket, shot is missed, but a foul committed. As to the line, it will be Gavin Sokup, and Dawson Guess will pick up his first foul. Sokup already getting the line. We've seen games especially this year. Feels like more this year than last couple of years that as Soka will make the first free throw that we, we go a lot of the game without free throws being shot. But here already the third free throw made by Mitchell in this first quarter. Governor's still yet to go to the line. As a free throw upcoming here from Soka will rattle its way out, but the offensive board, the putback is good. And that one came from, Col uh, came from Colton Smith to make it a now 13-5 lead for Mitchell. With 2.10 to go here in quarter number one. Olsen almost had the ball knocked away. Now Olsen had an open three but didn't take it. Ball was knocked away. Governors have had trouble hanging on to the ball here this afternoon so far in this first quarter. Mario Simmental, who's in for the Governors, will catch. He lost the handle of the ball and it's going to be picked up by Marcus Talley. Another turnover by the Governors. Talley missed the layup and then a foul committed as it will be called on Colton Smith who was coming in maybe thinking about a putback slam or at least just flying in for the rebound the putback shot but he fouled gets on the defensive rebound and the governors who have turned the ball over six times in this first quarter find themselves down by eight as Buss has it. Mount Marty commit will give for Eladio Simmental hands off for Olsen at the point looking underneath the basket but hands back for Buss. He will drive inside the paint, kicks it for Kaiser. Head fakes, drives through two men. There's a shot that's good, and a blocking foul is called. Kaiser gets the shot to go and is fouled. And Sutton Thompson will pick up the foul, trying to get the charge. Didn't get there in time. And Kaiser will go to the free throw line, where he's got four points, looking to add to it on the end one attempt. Free throw will be missed by... Kate Kaiser. Three for four from the line for the Mitchell Colonels. 0 for 1 for the Governors. 120 to go here in quarter number one. Lob pass for Tally. He'll catch underneath. No help defense for the Governors. Kaiser got beat around the screen. And it's a 15 7 lead as Marcus Tally had an easy bucket. He's now got six so far in the ballgame. Luke Olson for Getz in the corner. Getz will drive baseline. Got cut off. By Soka, but now we'll hand back for Buss. And a step back, now Guess will pull up for a long range three and get his second of the game. That's a big three for Dawson Guess to make it 15-10 as we're in the final minute of this first quarter, down to 45 seconds to go here in quarter number one. Tally, baseline, nice move around was Colton Smith. Got right around the defense as the time, we have time called. The, Mitchell getting a delay game warning. The ball kept moving towards midcourt. Jet Zabel will check back in for Cade Kaiser. And now we'll get Caden Hinker back in the game. They'll make that Gavin Hinker, not Caden Hinker. I think Mitchell would love to have Caden Hinker back on their team. Their 15 and one team would be that much better, that fast, if Caden Hinker went to go, come play for the Mitchell Colonels. There's a pass that is Deflected from Gavin Sokup, and Dawson Getz will inbound again here with the shot clock. Two seconds difference between shot clock and game clock. Down to 25 to go in the quarter. Luke Olson to the left side for Simmental. That pass, there's a foul committed with 20 seconds to go here in the first. And that will be on Gavin Hinker, his first. That's the team's fourth, so still no free throws here for the Governors, but now the shot clock is turned off, and the Governors can hold for the final shot. They're down by seven right now, down by touchdown, 17-10, with 15 seconds to go here in the first. Olsen will walk, walk back to the timeline. Five-second count starts as he'll try and get around the screen of Zabel. He'll drive in, floats to the basket, misses the shot, rebound is grabbed by Hinker. Down to two seconds, nearly a travel. Tally got the shot off in time, but it's not going to count, and that will take us to the end of the first quarter with Mitchell leading 17-10 to 10 
over the Pier Governors here at Riggs High School. Friday afternoon basketball, 17-10 lead for the Metro Colonels over the Pier Governors as we head to the second quarter. Back in a minute, you're listening to Pier Governor Basketball on KCCR, watching it on YouTube at KCCR Sports. Building a home. It's the biggest investment most of us make in a lifetime. Not to mention it's a decision that, well, you pretty much live with day and night. The quality of the workmanship stares back at you like a reflection. It also affects the value of your investment. Choosing the right contractor is critical. Kruger Contracting is that contractor. Call 222-2523. Quality workmanship and materials completed on time. Kruger Contracting. In a word, quality. Call 222-2523. AGE Corporation's Contractors and Crane Service is a proud supporter of Pier Governor Athletics. For almost 60 years, AGE has been building South Dakota. For all your site work, construction, and crane work needs this season, AGE is here to help. Give them a call. AGE Corporation and Crane Service, 223-2732. That's 223-2732. AGE, proud supporters of local sports. As we welcome you back here, second quarter, just about to begin. The Pure Governors are down 17-10 on the American Family Insurance Brittany Schofelbein scoreboard. Glad you're with us here on this Friday afternoon. Governors led 5-2, but that's pretty much all they've been able to lead, 5-4. Their last lead for the Governors as they trail it by seven as we're underway here in the second. Driving all the way in, there's a foul committed Ty and Buzz nearly got the block, but Colton Smith got the hand knocked on by Ty and Buss, knocked him over, and it'll be Colton Smith to the free throw line for the first time this afternoon. First free throw here for Smith is good. He's got seven points, game high so far. Cooper Twilliger will check in for the first time this afternoon. Dawson Getz had two threes. Kate Kaiser had two jumpers. That's all the Governors had scored. 0 for 1 for the free throw line. Kaiser had an and one opportunity. Second free throw is knocked down by Smith. And it's 19 to 10. Mitchell Colonels lead it by nine. And five different guys score in that first quarter. Smith's got eight now. Tally's got six. Mandel and Hinker with two. And then one point for Soka. Zabel, free throw line jumper. That one just falls off. And the rebound's grabbed by the Colonels. Quickly up ahead. Gavin Soka will hand back for Smith. Golden Smith, top of the key for Tally. He'll start to drive, hesitates, back out for Smith. Switching on the defense on the screen, but a nice pass underneath for Gavin Hinker. As the governors have watching the ball, and as Smith drove, Hinker was, he was able to just to flip it to Hinker underneath. Olsen floats it to the basket and in, and Luke Olsen's on the scorer sheet. His first bucket, probably one of the more difficult shots of the afternoon for him, and he finally gets one to fall. Here is Tally that floats to the basket and is able to easily answer back on that made shot by Olsen. Now it's 23 to 12. And Coach Brandon Kuser will call timeout with 6.44 to go here in the second quarter. We'll keep it here on KCCR on KORN and on YouTube at KCCR Sports. I'm glad you're with us here from the Mitchell area. And uh, it should be a fun day of basketball overall. The Governor girls will be at the Corn Palace at 7 o'clock tonight as they uh, take on Mitchell. We get a 3 o'clock start here on a Friday afternoon, then a Friday night game at the Corn Palace, 7 o'clock with the Governor girls taking on the uh, Mitchell Colonels. Also coming up uh, tonight over on, country, uh, over on Capital City Rock, uh, Country 95.3 will have basketball tomorrow as it will be uh, the Soybeans Chargers taking on the James Valley Christian team as uh, DT Myro have the call uh, for, uh, with 11.30 start time on Country 95.3 here on Cap over on Capital City Rock of Hawaii Capitals Hockey as they will be taking on the Rushmore Thunder. We're going to try our best to have Hawaii Capitals Hockey. We think we've got it figured out even though it's going to be remote broadcast. We're going we're gonna to give it a go as Luke Olson, he started to drive. He's fouled the first team foul by the Mitchell Colonels in the second quarter. That foul came from the right elbow and it's going to be on Gavin Hinker, his second and Olsen now will inbound here with 6.36 to go in the second quarter. Governors are down by 11, 23 to 12. 
Olsen, pass deflected, stolen away. Lob up ahead for Smith. He's got a chance. He'll throw it down with one hand with authority. And Colton Smith makes it a 13-point game. Seventh turnover now by the Governors here this afternoon. First one of this second quarter. Jed Zabel drives all the way in. He traveled, and he'll turn it over. Looking for contact, but didn't get it. And a now eighth turnover by the Governors here in this first half. And Pires struggled so far today taking care of the basketball. 25-12 score here in the second quarter. Top of the key for Marcus Talley. Drives inside the paint, floats to the basket, missed the shot, but the rebound's grabbed by Sokup, and his jumper will be knocked down. And it's a 15-point lead now for Mitchell. 27-12 with 5.50 to go here in the first half. Sokup's got his first field goal. Kaiser left side here for Miles Doyle. And we now we get a foul away from the ball, and I believe Kate Kaiser going to call for an illegal screen, which will be his second foul. Another turnover by the Governors. They've got nine now. And Pierce, even without the ball in their hands, are still struggling to hold on to possession of the ball. Marcus Talley for the Mitchell Colonels into the front court. Hinker has it on the right side. Doyle gives him plenty of space. Now Talley pulls up for three. That one's missed, and the rebound grabbed by Dawson Guess on the weak side. Guess will run the floor as he'll step back, pull up for a three in transition. Knocked down his third three for Dawson Getz. He's now got nine. He does have uh, nearly the game high. Ten points still for Parker Band, uh, for Colton Smith to lead all scores, but the team high nine of the 15 points gathered by Dawson Getz on three threes. This will be in the corner for Tally. He'll kick it back out, soak up his open for three. He'll bury that one to make it a 30 to 15 game. And every time the Governors get something going one way, they find themselves going back the other way. And Mitchell has got an answer for everything. Here's a three coming up for Miles Doyle. That's missed. The rebound's grabbed by the Mitchell Colonels again. Leading by 15, Tally all the way to the basket. It'll rattle its way through. And Marcus Tally now with 10 points. And a timeout again will be taken here by Coach Brianna Kusler. It'll be a full timeout. And the Governors are struggling right now. Down by 17 here in the first half with 4.39 to go. 32-15 lead for the Mitchell Colonels. We'll step aside for 30 seconds. You're listening to Pierre Governor Basketball on KCCR, KORN, and also watching it on YouTube at KCCR Sports. At Agtegra, we're leveraging the power of the cooperative to benefit our farmers and ranchers, their families, and local communities. We're creating jobs for your neighbors and putting money back into our communities. We're lending a hand in our rural fire departments, food banks, and 4-H and FFA programs. That's what local is all about. When you do business at Agtegra, you help us make a difference in your community. Agtegra, strong, stable, dependable, and local. As we welcome you back, it is 32-17. The Mitchell Colonels are all over the Pier Governors right now. 32-15 with 4:39 to go here in the second period in the second quarter. As Mitchell came out with a 17-10 lead at the end of the first, have already up that another eight points. Make that, make that another 10 points already here in this second quarter. So your Sun and Shine will check in for the first time as it is Olsen, Sun and Shine, Getz, Zabel, and Doyle for the Governors right now. Tally, along with the Mandel, Hinker, Smith, and Solik are the five in as Getz. That's a long two, but he knocks it down. Dawson Getz, he's now got 11 for the Governors. He takes over the game high right now. But unfortunately, for the Governors, they have just six points outside of his shots and then there's a three that's been made by Parker Mandel and it's a 35-17 game and then there's a foul committed by Gavin Hinker that will pick up his third as Cooper Twilliger will check in and spell Jet Zabel oh they call it number four I thought it was on number 40 and they call it on Marcus Talley his first with 407 to go a lob pass out, ball is tipped. It will stay with the Governors as it went out of bounds off of the Colonels and off of Colton Smith. 
18-point lead for the Mitchell Colonels here with 4.04 to go in the second quarter. Luke Olson here for Peer. On the top of the key, directing traffic, works to the right side. Olson still with it. 18 to go on the shot clock. Drives inside the paint, kicks it for Doyle on the baseline. Back out for Olson. Now top of the key for Dawson Getz. Getz will start to drive, pick up his dribble, find it for Olsen. Olsen shot partially blocked. Twilliger, though, will grab it. Down to three seconds. Back out for Getz. He's got to get a shot away. He does as the shot clock expires and knocks down another three. Getz with four threes in this first half. The governor's down by 15, and that three almost answered by Colton Smith. It rolled in and out and still hit the rim another time. But Dawson Getz right now with 14 points in this ball game, four threes. That one, the big one, as time was expiring on the shot clock. Olsen hesitates and then drives. Inside the paint, gives it for Doyle, and then Miles Doyle underneath the basket will get the baby hook to go to make it 35-22. Governors have cut the lead of 13 with 2.50 to go here in the second quarter. Marcus Talley drives. Lost the handle of the ball, but will... Regain possession. Smith spin move around gets an easy layup for Colin Smith. I say it's easy. He made it look easy. A difficult shot to still make, but Smith made it look easy on that end of the floor. 2.30 to go here in the second quarter. 37-22. Goes down by 15. Olsen for Twilliger on the left elbow. Back out. Olsen, he's open for three. Takes it, but he misses it. Rebound is grabbed by Sunshine. Sun and Shine will give it back for Dawson Getz as he's trying to look for some space. Miles Doyle now on the right side. That pass is tipped, and it's taken by Gavin Hinker. Another turnover by the Pier Governors. That is number 10 overall in the ball game. 10 to 3 in turnovers right now. Tally all the way to the basket, missed the shot. Rebound was tipped and missed, but then another rebound as it will be taken. Coach Kusler is looking for a goaltending because the net was hit while the ball was still on the rim, and then we get a foul committed by the Governors trying to get a swipe steal from Luke Olsen going around the back. And Olsen will pick up his first foul and the team's third with 1.51 to go here in the second quarter. Mario Simmental back in for the Govs as Marcus Talley will throw it in for Mitchell. Ball's knocked by Olsen back out of play. Now it's a quarter inbound with still 1.50 now to go. Still fresh 35 for the Mitchell Colonels. Lob pass out to the top of the key. Sokup will drive and kick for Thompson. Now back for Sokup again. Thompson on the left side. He'll look, kick it back for Sokup. Now on the right wing for Talley. As he made a jab step, now he'll start to drive with the left hand. Floats it with the right hand inside the paint, and it falls through for Marcus Talley, who's got 12. And a 17-point lead again for the Mitchell Colonels with 1.20 left to go in the second quarter. That shot's missed by Twilliger, too strong with it. Thompson gets the rebound. Talley will get the outlet pass, and he'll race down the floor. Gives it for Hinker, who was fouled by Twilliger on the other end of the floor. And Gavin Hinker will go to the free throw line for two. Twilliger picks up his first foul, and that is the fourth governor foul of this second quarter. So with 1.15 to go, Mitchell will be in the bonus the rest of the way as Hinker will shoot two after that shooting foul. First free throw was missed by Hinker. Four points so far for Hinker. Jet Zabel will check in for Cooper Twilliger. Hinker, he has got a sub waiting for him. If he makes the free throw, he does, so they will get the sub. That'll be it. Nicholas Moeller that will check in. So Nicholas Moeller in for the first time, six foot senior. Will play the final minute and 10 seconds of this second quarter. 18 point lead for the Governors. Zabel will drive. And then we get a foul maybe before the shots. Nope, it was on the shot as it will be on a Sutton Thompson. And with 102 to go here in quarter number two, Jet Zabel is at the line for the first time. First free throw is good for Zabel. His first points of the afternoon. He did not play on Tuesday against the Bobcats, dealing with an illness. 
His first game back since the week before. Second free throw is good for Zabel to make it 40 to 24 in the final minute here of the second quarter. 16 point lead for the Mitchell Colonels. Top of the keys, Thompson, left side tally. Now in the corner, cross court pass. There's a three up from Sutton Thompson and he buries it. 43-24, a 19 point lead now with 35 seconds to go in the first half. Olsen behind the back dribble, lays it at the basket and is able to get that one to fall through. Olsen now with four points, but Mitchell can hold for the final shot as they lead it by 17 as we come down the final seconds of this second quarter. Still 17 seconds to go. Tally has it at the top here for Mitchell. Tally trying to drive down to seven seconds. There's a three that's away. Missed the shot. Tally gets the rebound with three seconds to go. Missed that shot as well. The putback is missed a couple times, and we will end the first half with the Governors leading by 17 or make that trailing by 17. First, I thought maybe there was a whistle at the end, but I think that was just to stop play. A 17-point lead for the Mitchell Colonels at the end of the first half, 43-26, American Family Insurance, Brittany Schofield by scoreboard. We will step aside, come back in three minutes with the halftime stats. You're listening to Pure Governor Basketball on KCCR, also on KORN, and you're watching it on YouTube at KCCR Sports. Nick and Chelsea Redmond at Floss Dentistry and Pier is family owned and operated. They have modern practice with skill and caring staff. They have same day availability. Floss Dentistry is located at 603 East Sioux Avenue in Pier with hours Monday through Thursday from 8 to 5. Give them a call at 605 224 2161 and don't put off that scheduled cleaning any longer. Floss Dentistry, 603 East Sioux Avenue in Pier, or give Dr. Nick and Chelsea Redmond a call at 605 224 2161. When you're in the need for high-quality replacement auto parts, look no further than Xander Auto Parts and Machine Shop in Pier. Xander's has been servicing the Capital City area for over 40 years. Their professional parts techs can get you the parts you need and get you back on the road. Stop by Xander Auto Parts and Machine Shop at 500 West Sioux Avenue in Pier or call 224-9221. Xander's, your locally owned independent auto parts store. 500 West Sioux in Pier. Go Cubs! We all want to be happy, but sometimes that doesn't feel possible. But if you have hope, you have everything. Rising Hope Counseling provides high quality mental health services with locations across South Dakota. Additionally, by providing telehealth, we ensure South Dakota's rural residents have access to high quality mental health services. Our team lives and works in your communities, and we understand the unique challenges we face. Schedule appointment by phone or online today. Rising Hope Counseling, offering hope, healing, and change. We might not be the largest repair shop in town, but we take pride in what we do. We want to make the experience as painless as possible for you. So we will work with your insurance company on your claim from beginning to the end. Locally owned with 50 years combined in the shop, Wheelhouse Auto Body will take the stress off of you. Wheelhouse Auto Body at 720 North Garfield or contact them at 605-494-0436. 605-494-0436. Or wheelhouse auto body at gmail.com. This winter, sip on a delicious hot cocoa and lose yourself in the grace of a fresh falling snow before you smash that hot mug on the driveway and join First Dakota to bank some noise for winter sports. Stomp for block shots, holler for match ceiling takedowns, and go berserk for a perfect dismount. Let's give the home team all we've got. Bank some noise with us at First Dakota National Bank. Open a new account online today at firstdakota.com, member FDIC. River Bottom Sanitation, your locally owned waste management company serving the Pier and Fort Pier communities. Contact River Bottom Sanitation for your residential and commercial pickups. Now River Bottom Sanitation is your source for all your roll-off needs. River Bottom Sanitation and Pier and Fort Pier. Give them a call for pricing at 605-222-1120. River Bottom Sanitation. That's 605-222-1120. And as we walk you back here, the halftime stats for you as the Governors are down 43-26 to the Mitchell Colonels here at the break. And we start with the leading Mitchell Colonels who 
have picked up 12 points for Marcus Talley and 12 from Colton Smith. Those two in double figures. Six points for Gavin Sokup. Five for Gavin Hinker, as well as also uh, three points for Sutton Thompson. Those uh, in total six players have scored for the Mitchell Colonels, who are six of eight from the free throw line, three for four in each of the first two quarters. Turned the ball over three times in the first quarter, did not turn the ball over at all in the second quarter, where the Governors on the other side had uh, six turnovers in the first quarter, another four in the second, ten turnovers in total uh, in that first half. For the Governors' side, scoring-wise, Dawson Getz got 14 points. He's got four threes in those 14 points. But the rest of the way, the Governors have four points from Luke Olson and then two points from Jed Zabel and two from Miles Doyle. Not a whole lot. Of, uh, and then also four points from Kate Kaiser. So not a whole lot of extra uh, scoring for this Governor's squad coming outside of Dawson Getz, who were outscored by seven in that first quarter, 17-10. to 10. Uh, in quarter number one, and now down by 17, outscored by another 10 points in quarter number two, and 19-point lead, the largest for the Mitchell Colonels. They, there's, they were starting to flirt with the potential of having a 30-point lead by halftime, uh, but the Governors were able to, to kind of, they weren't necessarily able to settle in, but keep keep pace with the Mitchell Colonels, and unfortunately, you can't keep pace with Mitchell the rest of the way. You have to be able to outscore them, and again, with a 17-point lead right now, if you're the Governors, you got to do a couple of things. You have to break this down, break this game down into small increments. You, you know, n- taking a possession at a time. Yes, all those cliches. But you look at it down by 17. You got 16 minutes to go. Well, if you can make up a point every minute the rest of the way, uh, knock it down by four points every four minutes. You don't have to be. You can be down by 13 with four minutes to go in the in the. Uh, third quarter. Be down by nine going into the fourth quarter. Cut it to five with four minutes to go. At some point, yes, you got to get more than four points uh, picking up in that span, but it's not. You, you can't get all 17 points back at once. Now, last time I said that, Governors were down by, I think, 10 or 12 or whatever it was and had a 10-0 run to start the second half, and all of a sudden, they were boom, right back in it and had the lead in a blink of an eye, uh, but down by 17 against the best team in the, in the state, you're not going to get all 17 points back. You don't need to press I mean, four points, that's two possessions. That's getting a stop and a score on two different possessions. Everything else can be even over those four minutes, and you've done your, your job uh, to, to get back with, to start the pace to get back. you got to do that every four minutes of, of scoring and stopping at least two possessions of that to get yourself back in this game. This is not over at all, and quite yet it's not over. Governors still have some life, and but, they, but they've got to start the right path. If you go down by 23 or 21 and go the opposite way of those four points to start the third quarter and with four minutes to go in the third, you're down by 21. Then everything kind of, I wouldn't say gets thrown out of the window, but you have to inch your way closer. You can't go backwards at any point in this second half. It's going to be all forward in the Mitchell Colonels who at 15 and one, it's going to be hard to do it to begin with, but they are a team, but, but this governor team has got to know that you take it take it in increments. You take it in increments. You want to pick up those four points here in the next four minutes and go on from there. You don't want to be down by 20 in the first couple minutes of this third quarter because then all bets are off and this Mitchell team can can suppress you and, and, and pretty much hold you down for the remainder of the game at that point uh, if things go the opposite way for the Governors uh, here in the start of this third quarter. Here, Governors are down 43-26 at the end of three quarter, or at the end of second quarter, heading to the third quarter. We will step aside for two minutes, come back with the second half. After this, you're listening to Pure Governor Basketball on KCCR, on KRN, and also watching it on YouTube at KCCR Sports. With any dream, the wind won't always be at your back. The sun won't always be shining. And some rain is going to fall. American Family Insurance is like a good solid roof that you can trust to protect your biggest dreams. With plans that could save you up to 23% when you bundle your home and auto. Also, you can continue to dream fearlessly, no matter what comes your way. American Family Insurance. Visit mfam.com to learn how discounts may apply to you. American Family Mutual Insurance Company assigned its operating company, 6000 American Parkway, Madison, Wisconsin. Contact the Brittany Shufflebind Agency, LLC. 224-6627. Looking for your next new or used car, truck, or SUV? Then go no further than the comfort of your own home. Shop online at lammotor.com. On lammotor.com, you'll find the vehicles Lambs has in stock. You can schedule a test drive or your vehicle's next tune-up all online. New or used, 
Shop for it all online, anywhere you are. Lamb Motor has the right vehicle for you. Lamb Motor in Oneida and online, lambmotor.com. No one likes to have electrical problems, but when they happen, call Tons Electric at 223-2518. With over 28 years of experience, Tons Electric can handle any type of electrical problem, whether it's residential, commercial, or agricultural. Their knowledgeable staff knows and understands the importance of your home, business, or ag facility and are prepared to help. Call Tons Electric at 223-2518. That's 223-2518. Tons Electric, serving the Pier and Fort Pier areas. The line to power. Financial investments are very important, but so are the investments of time, patience, and encouragement our young athletes receive from their coaches, teachers, and mentors. Your peer area Edward Jones Financial Advisors understand this. That's why Edward Jones is a proud sponsor of Governor Athletics on KCCR. Go Govs! For all your investment needs, call or stop by one of our offices to visit with your peer area Edward Jones Financial Advisor. Edward Jones, member SIPC. And as we walk you back here, the Pier Governors, they are down by 17 to start the third quarter. John Wickler here on this Friday afternoon. Glad you're with us here on a KCCR on a KORN and also watching it on YouTube at KCCR Sports. Governor girls are getting set to play at 7 o'clock tonight from the Corn Palace as they are looking to knock off a team that just lost for the first time all season on Tuesday to the Washington Warriors. And we talk with Coach Kirk B about, about that on Wednesday for Coach's Corner. He pretty much, I mean, and, and I would whole, wholeheartedly 100% agree that you, you kind of wish they weren't having their first loss coming in after their first loss. You wish they were still undefeated. Uh, that team probably has a sense of relief a little bit about them losing their first game after being at 15-0 and to start the season. Uh, and so it's not a... Well, sometimes you say, hey, well, they, they lost their game, so now they're going to be uh, on a downward spiral. And team's probably not going to be on a downward spiral. They might be a little bit more upset as Luke Olson will pull up for three. That's missed as we start the third quarter. Kaiser gets the offensive board. His shot, though, was blocked by Colton Smith. Ball knocked away by Olson, and then taken back here by the Governors. So a turnover by Mitchell, their first one since their first quarter, as Zabel has it. His pass goes off the hand of Solik. He'll gain it back, and then now it's back for Luke Olson. He'll drive high off the glass, misses the shot, and the rebound grabbed by Marcus Talley. Talley up ahead for Smith. His shot is good, and it's a 19-point lead. And Colton Smith now with 14 points here in the afternoon. And it's Kate Kaiser for Dawson Getz. Right side, pull up three. That one's just off the net. Saved by Doyle. Stayed in play. Now Getz, his shot will be good. And everybody had kind of given up on the play, thinking that ball was out of bounds, but somehow was saved by the Governors. And they end up picking up the points, make it 45-28. Still 17-point lead here for the Mitchell Colonels. Soak up into the corner. Solik now is for Tally. He'll pull up for three. That one rattles home for Marcus Tally, who makes this an even 20-point game. 15 points now for Tally. And the Govs are down 48-28. Here in the third. And this is where the game was not, did not want to go backwards if you're the Governors. As Jed Zabel, his shot, that is going to be a jump ball, and it's going to go to the Mitchell Colonels on the shot block and tie up. Ty and Bus will check in for Miles Doyle. And so it will be the Governors who continue to trail on the American Family Insurance, Brittany Schoffel by scoreboard. 6.15 to go in the third quarter. They're down by 20, 48-28. Landon Solik on the left wing. That pass deflected, still grabbed by Sokup. He'll throw it across court for Tally, who hesitated, thought about a three. Instead, will hand off for Hanker going underneath the basket. And Gavin Hanker's got his third field goal. He's now got seven points, and the lead's 22. 50-28, to 28, under six minutes to go here in the third. Olsen, good backdoor feed for Getz. He might have traveled, got away with it, but the shot missed anyway. And it's back for the Mitchell Colonels. Going the, down the left side of the floor, right side of the floor, on the left side of your dial. Shot is missed, and a foul committed by the Governors. That will send Landon Solik. Make that Gavin Soak up to the line for two. As Jed Zabel picks up his first foul of the afternoon. Free throw here for 
Soak up will rattle in and out. He's now two for three. Make that uh, one for three from the free throw line. Second free throw coming up here from Soak up. That one falls through. So a 23 point lead now for the Metro Colonels. Five and a half to go here in the third. Olsen to the right side. On the right wing, top of the key now for Kaiser. Kaiser will drive. He'll get the shot off the glass, miss the shot, rebound will be grabbed by Solik. Up ahead here for Tally. As Tally hesitates, his pass back to Tally. Good pump fake drives in. Flow with the right hand, missed the shot, rebound is fought for. Olsen has a tie up with Haker on it, and it'll go to the Pier Governors on the alternating possession. Still 5.03 remaining here in quarter number three. Olsen gives for tie and bus. Governors down by 23. Olsen at the top of the key, the right side here for Cade Kaiser. Zabel. He'll start to drive in, floats to the basket, and his shot too strong, and the rebound's grabbed by the Colonels. Marcus Talley on the left side now for Sokup. Pump fake by Solik, dribbles it back out, now it's to the corner, Sokup's for three. That one's off the back iron, the rebound's grabbed on the weak side by Zabel. Trying to wait for the trap to clear out, but then Zabel will just take it down the floor himself. Tie bus on the left side for Kaiser. Now back for Zabel again. He will drive, trying to get around to Hinker, but will give it back for Kaiser. Hands off for Olsen. Steps back beyond the arc right now. 15 to go on the shot clock. 4.08 to go here in the third quarter. Olsen with Zabel given the screen. Olsen pulls out for three and buries it. Pulls the Governors within 20. And it's 51-31. But in those first four minutes, the Governors didn't get those four points made up. Instead, Mitchell had another three points in the deficit. And there's a foul committed. Ty and Buss trying to defend Gavin Sokup. And Buss will pick up his second foul. Audio Simmental will check in for Dawson Getz. With 3.45 to go here in quarter number three. Sutton Thompson will check in, as well as also Parker Mandel. Inbound pass. It'll be a th foul on the three by Jet Zabel. And the free throw line will be Colton Smith. We pulled up for a three, and Zabel picked up the foul. His second. And Smith will step to the line for three long free throws. Without taking a dribble, makes the first free throw attempt. Smith stands at 6'5", the sophomore. Second free throw is good. Now, he can handle the ball, but it was Coach K who kind of stopped having his big guys dribble the basketball on free throws. He said these big, big guys can't dribble the basketball, so we're going to not let them dribble, tell them to stop dribbling on free throw attempts, catch it, get yourself set and ready to go, because when you dribble, you sometimes you might take yourself off balance. Now, obviously, Cole Smith, while he's a big guy, can still handle the basketball, but he does not dribble it, and he hits all three free throws as Ty and Bustle pull up for a three for the Governors. Missed the three, and the rebound's grabbed, and then a foul committed. I think Bus maybe got the foul. It is Bus on the foul, his third, as Miles Doyle will check in for Eladio Simmental. With 3.22 left to go here in the third quarter. As Dawson Guest now will check in for Ty and Butts, who's got his four fouls. Missed a foul somewhere in there. So he's got four. Governors have picked up four fouls with 3.15 to go here in the third quarter. On the right side, Gavin Sokup. Marcus Talley for three in the corner. Missed the shot, rebound. It'll be off the hands of Parker Mandel, and it will go to the Pier Governors. 3.07 to go here in quarter number three. I mentioned Coach K, former Duke coach, and a big Duke fan celebrating his birthday today. Ben and Dean wish him a happy birthday, 21st 
as Dawson Getz will get in the lane to pull up for the shot to knock it down. Dawson Getz now with 18 in the afternoon for the Governors. Parker Mann down the left wing. Lap pass underneath for Soak Up. Off the glass and in. They answer right back to keep the lead at 23. 56 33. And we send greetings from Blake Dean. She said that at the beginning, but greetings from Blake Dean as Miles Doyle pulls up for three to knock it down. 56 36. Doyle with the first three of the afternoon. Colton Smith will drive baseline. Thompson back in the corner. Another three from Smith. That's missed. Rebounds grabbed by Thompson, though. An offensive board here for. The Colonels, and then Luke Olson will draw the foul. And Sutton Thompson will step to the free throw line as that is team foul number five. And Solik will check back into the game. And Sutton Thompson will go to the line for the first time this afternoon. Two oh five remaining here in the third quarter. First free throw finds its way through for Thompson, who now has four points this afternoon. And the lead's back to 21 again. Second free throw is good. So Thompson goes two for two for the free throw line. As we're under two minutes to go here in quarter number three. Governor's down 58-36. Luke Olson on the right side, he is fouled. It'll be the first Mitchell foul in the half of the quarter. And that is on Sutton Thompson, his third. A fresh 35 here with 1.51 to go in the third quarter. Olsen will inbound here for Zabel. He'll turn his pass, deflected, so it gets the steal. Another turnover by the Governors. All the way up ahead for Mandel. Tried to alley-oop it. Zabel is able to disrupt the alley-oop. And then Zabel also fouled Colton Smith. And so Smith will go to the free throw line. The governors have turned the ball over 12 times here today. Third foul committed by Zabel. And Smith at the free throw line. First free throw is hits the front of the rim, barely hits the rim. And the student section gives Smith a big O after he came up laughing after the foul was committed by Zabel. Second free throw. That is good to make it 59-36 with 1.42 to go. Smith comes out of the ball game after the made free throw. So it's Solik, Thompson, Mandel, Hinker, and soak up on the floor right now for Mitchell. Olsen will drive inside the paint. He his shot. He is fouled with 1.30 to go, and Olsen will step to the free throw line. Governors are two for three for the line so far this afternoon, where Mitchell Colonels, they were six of eight at the end of the first half. And the, now seven of nine here in the third quarter. First free throw is good for Molson. As Olsen now with eight points. Four in the second, now four here in the third. Second free throw is also good for Luke Olsen. 59 38, 90 seconds to go here in the third quarter. Mitchell leads it by 21. That pass deflected. Twilliger almost had a steal, and then it still will be stolen away, and it'll be a foul committed by Parker Mandel. His first foul and the third Mitchell foul with 120 to go here in the third. Governor's down by 21 with the ball. Luke Olson, he's open for three. He'll take it, but he missed it. It was short. Rebound will come all the way back out towards midcourt, and Solik racing in. Olson had to re run back for it. Then a running shot and another foul committed by Mitchell will send Olson back to the free throw line. As Sutton Thompson will pick up his fourth foul now. And Luke Olson back to the free throw line with 103 to go. First free throw is missed. 
Governors now three and make that four of six from the free throw line. Marcus Talley will check in for Thompson. As Coach Krutzfeld has not taken a timeout, but also uh, does not want Thompson to foul out of the game in the third quarter. Free throw is good for Molson. He goes one for two on that trip. 20 point game, 59-39. Gavin Sokup in the corner for Mandel. Underneath for Hanker. That shot is off the glass. Missed it. Cooper Twilger will grab the rebound and pull it down. Olsen across court for Doyle. Now for Getz. He stepped back, thought about a three. Now the pass will come back to Olsen with 25 to go on the shot clock. 35 now to go here in the quarter. Almost lost the balance. Then the pass went behind Kaiser. Another turnover by the Governors. With 30 seconds to go, shot clock is turned off. And it will be one final shot upcoming here for Mitchell here in the third with the Colonels leading by 20. 20 seconds to go here in the third. Sokup gives back for Tally with 15 to go here in the quarter. Tally's pass, that's gonna be a foul by Dawson Getz who was trying to be aggressive in a steal on Landon Solik, but it'll be a, t- a foul on Getz is seconds and two free throws here for Landon Solik who has not scored yet this afternoon. But gets two free throws. First free throw is off the front rim. Mason Herman will check in for the Mitchell Colonels. 6'4 junior in for the first time. Second free throw is good. Solik goes one for two for the line. Down to 10 seconds remaining here in the third quarter. Olsen, he'll spin. It is a fadeaway shot is missed. Rebound by Twilliger. Put back it twice, but missed. And then a three at the buzzer is going to be long from Parker Mandel. And the Governors will go to the fourth, down by 21. 60 to 39, Mitchell leads it over the Pier Governors as we head to the fourth quarter. We will step aside for a minute, come back with the fourth. You're listening to Pier Governor Basketball on KCCR. Watching it on YouTube at KCCR Sports. As community bankers, BankWest employees are deeply committed to supporting local causes, growing the local economy, and creating local opportunity. At a time when you can bank anywhere, we hope you choose BankWest. We'll be your financial partner for the long haul, helping you and your community achieve financial success. BankWest. Convenient. Connected. Committed. Member FDIC. Look, it's no secret that owning a vehicle can cause a lot of stress and they get a lot of wear and tear on them through the extreme seasons we've grown to love. Graham Tire wants you to know that you can trust them with any problem that you have with your vehicle. Their ASC certified mechanics can make your AC cool again or even just change your oil. They can look into and fix those noises that seem to come from nowhere and have you stressed out. Bring your car to Graham Tire so they can put your mind at ease. Graham Tire, your tire store next door. Back here in the start of the fourth quarter, Pier Governors, they are down on the American Family Insurance, Brittany Schofelbein scoreboard, 60 to 39, a 21 point lead at the end of three for the Colonels as they will get the ball to start the fourth quarter. And the Colonels need to hold on for another eight minutes and will go to 16 to one in the season. And we'll take on the Roosevelt Rough Riders in Sioux Falls tomorrow. Scheduled for a seven o'clock tip off from Roosevelt High School. Marcus Talley will drive in. Good handoff for Colton Smith. That will make it a 62-39 lead. And a 23-point advantage here for the Mitchell Colonels. 18 points for Smith. Got the game, a tie for the game high. Olsen will get the lob pass from Kay Kaiser. And a 2023-24 version of the alley-oop for the Pier Governors as Olsen was able to catch in the air and put it up for two. Marcus Talley for three. Knocks it right back down. And every time the Governors score, it seems like they can't get an empty possession the other way. It's a 24-point lead, largest lead now for the Mitchell Colonels. That shot is missed. There's a foul committed by Marcus Talley on the rebound attempt, a push in the back of Luke Olson. And the Governors will get the ball with 7-10 to go here in the fourth quarter. Dawson Getz will inbound. Finds Kate Kaiser, who got through the defense in an easy bucket and a layup for Kate Kaiser. Makes it 65 43. 
On the left side, it'll be back out for Soak Up. Now to the right side for Tally. Tally will back up. His pass to the right elbow, pass tip, but still grabbed by the Colonels. Solik will lob it back out for Smith. And now Tally will drive. He'll floor to the baskets. And Marcus Tally has got another one. He's now got 20 here this afternoon. Six and a half to go here in the fourth quarter, 67-43. Dawson Getz will drive, lost the handle of it, but was able, as he was losing the handle of it, just rolled along to Zabel, still on the left baseline. Now Olsen to the free throw line, the jumper off the screen is missed, and the rebound is grabbed by Talley again. Marcus Talley ha having himself a heck of a game. Landon Solik thought about a three in the corner. They'll work it back out top. Now Smith on the left side for three. That's knocked down by Colton Smith. And he's now got 21. And a timeout taken by Coach Brianna Kusler with 5.56 to go here in the fourth quarter. 70-43, to 43, a 27-point lead now for the Mitchell Colonels. We will step aside for 30 seconds. You're listening to Pure Governor Basketball on the KCCR, KORN, and watching it on YouTube at KCCR Sports back at the game and see how we came to our position. This is Pastor Sam from Faith Lutheran Church. We can also look back at our lives and see how we got to where we are today. If you're in a tough spot or if things are going great, I encourage you to try this approach. Call a timeout. Get some advice from the best possible coach, from your loving God. Join us at Faith Lutheran Church for worship where you'll hear God's plan for the game. We're Faith Lutheran and we are glad you're here. And we welcome you back here, the Pier Governors. They are down 50, uh, 70 to 43 on the American Family Insurance. Brittany shuffle by and scoreboard with 5.56 to go here in the fourth. We're glad you're with us here on KCCR, also on KRN. Watching it on YouTube, KCCR Sports. And the inbound coming out of the timeout, Kate Kaiser will take it for the Govs who Find themselves nearly into run time in a continuous clock in this fourth quarter. The left side, Miles Doyle. Now he gets three seconds, I believe, called against the Governors. So now a three does put this in a continuous clock with five and 40 remaining here in the fourth quarter. However, a turnover by a Mitchell. The pass hits the legs of Landon Solik as Miles Doyle lost the handle of it. Both teams trade turnovers. Back ahead for Landon Solik. And then he turns it back over and teams get a little sloppy here in the fourth quarter. Six turnover now by the Mitchell Colonels, but 14th of the day for the Governors. They have held the ball, held on the ball a little bit better in the second half of the Governors. They had 10 in that first half turnover wise and now have 14 so far in this game, but now make it 15 as there's another steal by Mitchell. Up ahead for Parker Mandel. He'll work it back out to the wing. That steal was by Nicholas Moeller. Now Solik on the right wing. Top of the key for Parker Mandel. Mandel the jab step, now gives back for Sokup. Right side for Moeller. Pass deflected, stolen back away. Another turnover by Mitchell. Judd Zabel will race down the floor. He nearly traveled, missed the first shot, and then he will be fouled on his putback and will go to the free throw line for two. As Landon Sulik will pick up his second foul. Zabel, two for two from the free throw line so far. And if makes, misses the first one, of course. Keeps a 27 point lead for the Colonels. Second free throw. That one will be good for Zabel. 70 to 44. 445 to go here in the fourth. Solik for Muller. Mandel will drive in. The left hand laid it off the glass, but missed the shot. Rebounds grabbed by Dawson Getz. Up ahead for Zabel. He'll look to get to the basket. He'll throw it off the glass and in. Zabel's got to his first field goal of the afternoon. 
with 4.20 to go here in the fourth quarter. It's able now with five points in the game, three of four from the free throw line, and just one field goal from the floor. Gavin Soak up, top of the key, underneath now for Mandel. Pass will go out top of the left side for Solik or in the corner. Now gives back for Ahsoka, who dribbles between two defenders. Then the shot missed, and it was out of bounds off the hands of Zabel. And it'll stay with the Mitchell Colonels. Mason Herman will check back in the game. 4.02 to go. Mandel will inbound, soak up. His shot goes up and good. Make it 72-46. And soak up now with 11 points. Four players are about to check in here for the Governors with 3.45 to go here in the fourth. And a foul committed away from the ball with 3.45 to go. And that'll be on number 50 at Nicholas Moeller. Ty and Buss, Cooper Twilliger, Eladio Simmental, and Sawyer Sunshine will check in. We also have number 44, Luke LeBrun, the 6'3 sophomore, checking in for the Colonels. All the starters are out for both these teams. Outside of Miles Doyle, the only one that's still in the game for the Governors. Doyle will throw left side for Simmental. Hands off for Ty and Buss. Buss back for Simmental. His shot, and that's blocked, and a rebound for the Mitchell Colonels. To the right side. Pass underneath. Simmental will get the steal. As Muller had it, and then he... His pass is intercepted by Simmental. Underneath for Tewilliger. Tewilliger with a couple of pump fakes, and his shot is missed, and he will go to the free throw line. Parker Mandel will pick up his second foul. And Tewilliger into the line for two. Governor so far with just five guys that have scored, making it now six as Tewilliger makes the first free throw. Make it 72-47. J.J. Buckholtz will check in for Miles Doyle with 3.13 to go here in the fourth quarter. Second free throw here from Tewilliger. That'll be good to make it 72-48. So still a 24-point lead for the Mitchell Colonels. Twilliger two for two from the free throw line. Three minutes to go here in the fourth quarter. On the baseline, that pass deflected, but still Mandel will come away with it. This pass now for Herman. Mason Herman underneath, that pass deflected. Back out top now for Parker Mandel. Mandel, the screen, the pick and roll. Herman missed the shot. Rebound, though, is tipped back and an easy layup for Sutton Thompson. Make it 74-48 with two and a half left to go. And a timeout quickly taken here by Coach Kusler just to get subs in. Bennett Swartos will check in for Ty and Buss. As the Mitchell Colonels will make a couple more subs. With two and a half left to go here in the fourth quarter. Bennett Swartos in everybody for the Governors. Come off the bench and in. As Simmental will drive all the way inside the perimeter and around but missed the shot. 10-foot jump shot missed too strong with it, and a rebound is grabbed by the Colonels. Over on the left side, Mason Herman. Top of the key for Moeller. Back to Herman on the left wing with two minutes to go here in the fourth. And Swartos picks him up. And the pass over now for Moeller on the right side. Top of the key for Tyler Christensen. On the right wing, back out top now, a 3 ahead for Luke LeBron. That one's missed, and the rebound will be tipped, and it is off of the Colonels, and it will go to the Governors with 1.46 to go here in the fourth quarter. So the Governors will fall to 10-8 and eight on the season. Mitchell Colonels will go to 16-1 and one on the year. And we'll take on the Roosevelt Rough Riders tomorrow night in Sioux Falls. They can get back on the bus, get back to Mitchell in decent time tonight, and then take the hour trip to Sioux Falls Tomorrow afternoon, Cooper Twilliger will get the bucket to go and is fouled as he was fouled by Abraham Gunnery. The 6'8 senior. 
Free throw is missed though by Terwilliger. Rebound will be off the Governors. And out of play with 1.25 to go here in the fourth quarter. 24 point lead for Mitchell. Led by as many as 27 in this game. With 1.15 remaining here in the fourth quarter. Top of the key. The right side, Herman. Now for Moeller with 105 left to go. Twilliger will get the steal for the Governors. Turnover number eight. Top of the key, Swartos for three. That one's offline. Rebound will be grabbed by Simmental. Taken back by Buckles with 50 seconds to go here in the fourth. Sunshine the left side for Simmental, who will drive in. His pass for Twilliger underneath. That pass deflected and then stolen by Herman. Governor 17 turnovers here this afternoon. 30 seconds remaining, four seconds between shot clock and game clock. We'll have a short post game show, but we'll take a post game show coming up. As this will be a turnaround shot missed by the Colonels out of bounds off of Mitchell and out of play with 19.4 to go. We weren't scheduled to have the post game show, but we're just going to wrap it up from right where we're at. But now having more of the remote broadcast, we'll have a quick post game show, but still keep things moving along here as the game clock is down, down to nine. Governors will not take the final shot. They have the ball, but will I believe they won't take it out. They will just dribble it out, and it will be a 70 to 54 win for the Mitchell Colonels over the Pier Governors. 74 50. Governors fall to Mitchell back in two minutes to wrap it up from Rick's High School. You're listening to uh, Pier Governor Basketball at KCCR, KORN, also watching it on YouTube at KCCR Sports. Ah, why am I so sore? There are everyday moments. Oh, hey, hold the ladder! Hold the ladder! Oh, oh. Yeah, that hurt. And there are epic moments. Slide, 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 slide. Coming! Slide, slide, Class of 1995! When a moment creates a health need, visit the experts at Avera Orthopedics. We're moving health forward so you can tell the story. Learn more at avera.org slash orthopedics. Refined design, remarkable capabilities. The Ford Edge at Capital City Ford delivers everyone and everything in style and comfort. Bold and aggressive on the outside, lavish with lots of tech on the inside. This SUV does a whole lot more than haul groceries. Travel with confidence when purchasing your all-new Ford Edge from Capital City Ford. And for a limited time, qualified buyers can purchase at 0.9% APR for 60 months. Check out their full vehicle lineup at CapitalCityFord.com. Capital City Ford in Pier. At Shane's Pharmacy, your health care is important, and Shane wants to be the pharmacist to take care of you. Shane's Pharmacy will make sure your prescriptions are filled in a timely manner. They will answer your questions, and they will even deliver to your home or office. Call 223-9200. Shane's Pharmacy, the pharmacy you know and trust. The number again is 223-9200. Shane's Pharmacy in Fort Pier, proud to support high school athletics. Most of us already know that Gale's Gas of Pier is the place to call for propane. They offer an automatic fill plan so you never have to worry about running out of propane. They accept debit and credit payments or a budget payment plan to spread out the cost throughout the year so you never have surprises when you get your bill. For delivery, convenience, and great customer service, call Gale's Gas at 224-5518. That's Gale's Gas at 224-5518. Back here at uh, Riggs High School as we set to wrap things up here as the Governors fall this afternoon to the Mitchell Colonels, 74 to 50 on American Family Insurance Pretty Shuffle by and Scoreboard. We'll go quickly through the totals. Uh, 21 points for Colin Smith. He's got the game high today. 20 for Marcus Talley. Those two in 20 plus figure uh, with the points. And Gavin Soka with 11. Three players in double figures overall for the Mitchell Colonels. Seven for Sutton Thompson. Seven for Gavin Hinker. Five for Parker Mandel and one for Landon Sulik. 
as the, the Colonels shoot 14 of 19 from the free throw line uh, here this afternoon. Turned the ball over eight times, four in that fourth quarter, but game within hand at that point as they were already up by 21 going into the third, and a 27-point lead was their highest uh, for the Mitchell Colonels here this afternoon. For the Governors, two players in double figures, 18 for Dawson Getz. He had 12, uh, 14 of his 18 in that sec in the first and second quarter in the first half. Finished with two buckets inside the arc uh, for his 18 points to lead the way. Luke Olson had uh, eight of his 12 in the second half, including six points in the third quarter, three of four from the free throw line. Five points then each for Jet Zabel, Miles Doyle, and Cooper Twilliger. Uh, to round out the scoring, Kate Kaiser did have six for the Govs, who shot eight of 12 from the free throw line after uh, then having uh, going three for five in that fourth quarter uh, from the line for Pierre. They turned the ball over 18 times, which included 10 the first half, another four in the, uh, make that 17 turnovers in total uh, with three in the third and another four in the fourth quarter as the Govs fall 74 to 50 to the Mitchell Colonels. Mitchell improves to 16 and one. They will take on the Roosevelt Rough Riders tomorrow. That says they will take on uh, on the road to Roosevelt. Uh, it'll be a seven o'clock tip off out at Roosevelt High School. Pier Governors will be at home again on Tuesday against the Jefferson Cavaliers. It'll be their final home game of the regular season. Uh, they will also take on Roosevelt uh, to wrap up the season next week, Friday. 7 o'clock tip-off on Tuesday and Friday here at home for, uh, for Pier on Tuesday against Jefferson at Roosevelt on Friday. Uh, the Mitchell Colonels, again, they play Roosevelt tomorrow in Sioux Falls. Back at home for a 7.30 tip-off on Tuesday against Brandon Valley and a 7.30 tip against O'Gorman in O'Gorman uh, at O'Gorman on that Friday of next week to wrap up their regular season. So the Governors fall here this afternoon as that will wrap things up for us here from Riggs High School. Uh, the Govs, they fall 74-50. to 50. Tune in over on Capital City Rock here tonight as we'll have Hawaii Capitals Hockey taking on the Rushmore Thunder. We'll try to get the remote broadcast in uh, for that contest as he, as we'll have that one from the, from the station but out uh, from the Thunderdome uh, on Capital City Rock and on YouTube at Capital City Rock Sports. So, so we hope, we hope we can make that happen. Uh, that, but that will wrap it up for us here today. Thanks for listening on KRN. Thanks for those in Mitchell uh, help letting me be a part of your afternoon for you. As the Governors uh, fall today, the Mitchell Colonels get the win 74-50. to John McLeary here signing off. We say so long from Riggs High School. You've been listening to Pure Governor Basketball on KCCR and on YouTube at KCCR Sports. Pure Governor Basketball is sponsored by Rising Hope Counseling, Bank West, Fisher Rounds, Billion Auto, AGE, Envirotech, Capital City Ford Lincoln and Toyota, American Family Insurance Brittany Scheffelbein Agency, River Bottom Sanitation, CHS River Plains, Wheelhouse Auto Body, Edward Jones Financial, Allied Plumbing and Heating, Burning Electric, Gales Gas, First Dakota National Bank, Faith Lutheran, Lamb Motors, Shane's Pharmacy, B&B Equipment, Owahi Federal Credit Union, Anderson Rumsa Dental, Todd's Electric, Graham Tire, Avera, and the South Dakota Office of the Attorney General Division of Consumer Protection. This has been a special presentation of